Welcome to Plant Medicine Transmissions with Javier Regueiro. We are continuing in this episode the exploration of the dieta process. I will start by something that a friend of mine wrote to me a couple of weeks ago, talking about his life in this uh, pandemic. He was sharing that he had been a lot more in being rather than doing. And this is exactly what a dieta is really about. And uh, also, to a very good degree, also what plant medicine ceremonies are really all about. For years, I have been fond of telling people, including my clients, that plant medicine ceremonies are only an excuse. An excuse for us to spend some time, a day or a night, with ourselves and devote to ourselves as much attention as possible. Plant medicines are very powerful and indeed they do catalyze healing and transformation. But in my viewpoint, the engagement with these medicines, the signing up for a ceremony or for a retreat or a dieta, is really about deciding to devote to ourselves some loving attention and uh, not much else. Many people complain of having felt rejected or abandoned and yet we reject and abandon ourselves. We neglect ourselves. Oftentimes we are stingy with ourselves in caring for ourselves. And this decision to be participating in a ceremony or retreat or dieta is really a decision to offer to ourselves the attention, the loving attention that we long for. So in a dieta, there is the invitation to spend as much time in seclusion, in isolation as possible, so as not to get too distracted by social interactions. So we could say that this present quarantine in many countries, including Peru, is really a dieta time. A dieta time where our social interactions are somewhat limited. Many people have struggled with that quarantine because they are not used to just being with themselves and have skillfully and quickly found ways to be with others, either online or otherwise, to distract themselves by constantly putting their attention outside themselves, either online or in activities that were really just a way to distract themselves and to kill time while they were waiting for this quarantine to end. I can understand that discomfort, that challenge of being left to one's own presence, as in the first years that I started engaging in dieta processes, I would happily distract myself in any way possible. My favorite ways to distract myself was by hanging out with other people who were in the dieta process, by visiting them or receiving their visits. And the other way for me was by reading books. In my last dieta, which happened in May of 2019, which was a Toe Datura diet, that uh, is also part of my new book, The Toe Datura Diaries, I was very deliberate about not distracting myself. 
For me, this was a very important diet with a very powerful plant teacher. I actually prepared myself very thoroughly for three weeks, more than I usually do before entering a dieta, because I knew that this was an important dieta and the better prepared I would arrive, the better for me. Also, as I was packing my bag to go to the jungle, I considered, of course, taking a couple of books, even taking my cell phone and my laptop because I knew that uh, internet connection and phone connection was not too far away from my teacher's new center outside the Quito's and decided against it because I knew, I know by now that the less distractions I have close at hand, the deeper my process will be. In the middle of it, I confess that I picked up a couple of books from my teacher center's library. One of them I simply lived through for a couple of days, and the other one only lasted three days. As indeed, my own experience, the experience that, that I was having, the environment that I was privileged to be in, was far more interesting than any book available. I did take with me to the jungle my iPod and the tiny portable speakers, which I only used very, very sparingly and on special occasions. The listening to pre-recorded music is also kind of not recommended when engaging in a dieta process. So what did I do? What does one do in the jungle or elsewhere in a dieta process? Well, as little as possible. This is a time for contemplation and it is a time for listening to our own inner voice. In our daily lives, we may have a surge of emotion, a certain reaction, old memories, upsets, and we are very good at dismissing all of this as not important. Now, everything that resurfaces during a dieta process is important and never an accident. The resurfacing of these things and uh, emotional states is yet another call from ourselves to ourselves to pay attention to pay attention, to explore further whatever is coming up as lovingly as possible. It is my belief that it's actually by offering our own attention to ourselves that we achieve healing. Healing, as far as I'm concerned, is not about a set of healing techniques it is about embracing, again, aspects of ourselves that we may have dismissed, betrayed, rejected, or abandoned. And the healing practices, the healing techniques, uh, the diet, all of those things that we do in order to heal is only meant to support the truly important part of the healing process, which is to devote to our own selves the attention that it craves. One of the deepest healing experiences that we can have with either Ayahuasca or San Pedro is to feel cared for. And uh, we call these medicines also plant teachers. So they are teaching us by example to care for ourselves. And they teach us to become ourselves, our own doctors and our own medicine. 
this invitation of uh, plant shamanic dietas to be in isolation and to do as little as possible is the same invitation, as far as I'm concerned, of doing as little as possible in the ceremonies, within or outside of a dieta process. Many people in plant ceremony are fond of doing a lot of things, of interacting with their altars, with their stones, to play along and sing along or sing their own songs during the ceremony. It's not that these activities are per se bad, but they may be a subtle and unconscious form of distracting oneself. With my own clients, I always dissuade people from doing much at all because I find that it is more rewarding if the person just stays in a quiet space where they can listen to their own voice rather than try to control or manipulate, so to speak, the experience at hand. And at the same time, I am fully aware that some of these, so to speak, activities are very beneficial to our process. For instance, whenever I drink medicine for myself, I find that while I am singing an Icaro, that much is happening within me in a very beneficial way. So it's not about what we do, and this is an important lesson for life. What is really important is the reasons, conscious or unconscious, of why we do this or that or anything. What I do consider a good and beneficial activity during a dieta or in a plant medicine process is to keep a journal. For us, particularly Westerners, keeping a journal, the act of writing, is a wonderful way to process and integrate what is happening to us. And it's very valuable to go back to these journal entries long after the diet or medicine process has completed itself. Because we tend to be rather amnesiac and quickly forget the important lessons and insights that we may have received during such processes. The disconnection from ourselves, which is at the root of many of our diseases and uh, our unease in life, can be easily healed by beginning to pay more loving attention to ourselves. When I am in a dieta process, I pay a lot of attention to my dreams, to my thoughts, to my emotions, leading to each ceremony and afterwards. And this has been amazing because ever since I started doing this a few years ago, I would arrive at each ceremony with the perfect intention, with the perfect theme that needed to be addressed and explored. Needed, I say, because clearly my subconscious and unconscious were telling me to begin paying attention to this or that theme. Our unconscious and subconscious are full of wisdom. They are very powerful guides and they are trying to tell us things all the time. And we can only hear those messages in a place of being receptive to their messages. We are already our greatest teachers and guides, 
but oftentimes we unfortunately fail to pay attention to that guidance. So many people are looking for their life purpose when their life purpose has been unfolding ever since they were born. It may not be the mission, the career, the activity that they were hoping to receive insight about. But truly, our greatest life purpose, as far as I'm concerned, is the continuation of this soul journey of remembrance and full realization of our own divinity and everybody else's. How that unfolds, how that manifests, once again, is not a matter of doing, but it's a matter of being. I believe that many of the most holy people on this planet do not have a school, an ashram, a healing center. They may be selling ice cream on the streets. It's not what we do in this world that makes any difference. It's who we are. It's the vibration that we allow and are ready to be, to manifest, to express itself from the deepest and most beautiful parts of our souls and our spirit. The dieta process has taught me over the years to pay attention, to pay loving attention to myself and whatever resurfaces in my life. And I have taken as a habit whenever, you know, outside this plant medicine process in my daily life, I have started whenever there is something that comes up, an upset, confusion, within a day or two, I set aside a date with myself, a time and place as free from distractions as possible. I make myself comfortable and I start listening. I start digging, exploring the real reasons for my upset. I get myself into a feeling state rather than just a mental state. And uh, I simply sit there and listen. And these dates with myself are always highly rewarding. And I know that the deeper part of myself appreciates so much the fact that I would make the time to be with myself and listen. So I can only encourage you, should you feel some upset of any kind, some unresolved issue, to make the time to be with yourself and with these resurfacing aspects of yourself and gently explore them. This is not about fixing ourselves. I believe that the times for fixing oneself are over. This is a time to honor who we are and to learn from ourselves. We can be in ceremony without any medicine because the real medicine is our own loving presence. And that loving presence can be nurtured simply by practicing it, little by little, one breath at a time. Blessings.